is our starting lineup of 10 for the men's 5,000 meters T11 final. In this, the reigning Paralympic Games champion from Chile, Christian Valenzuela, the Asian champion, Shinya Wadja of Japan, and the reigning European champion from earlier this year in Grosseto in Italy, Hassan Hussein Kassar of Turkey. Also in this, the former Paralympic Games champion, Shang Shen of China, the former world champion, Ariel Santos of Brazil, who's a very good prospect in this. He didn't finish in Doha, but he did get back on the track later in the week to win gold in the 1500 meters. It was very hot and humid in Doha. There were very few morning sessions there. There were very, very long evening sessions. And even though it was well away from the summer, it was still knocking on 40 degrees Celsius, well over 100 Fahrenheit for each evening session. Six of the 10 with major championship titles to their name. It's going to be competitive. And Steve, it's going to be a lot of fun. I think so. We've got, we got a good field here. We've got uh, Brazil involved in the opening race. We've got a, a nation and a city that's really taken a big, deep breath after the Olympics and is really ready and excited about the Paralympics. A lot of uh, good messages delivered, I felt, during the, the opening ceremony about what was to come and what was expected of the athletes. And the force for social change that the Paralympics can be. And it's always a, a great thing to see big crowds at uh, Paralympic events. Only a modest one first up this morning, but it'll build throughout the session and into the evening. It's a work day, of course, that public holiday for the opening ceremony because it coincided with Independence Day, which I thought was a, uh, a delicious coincidence or perhaps a bit more than coincidence that uh, Brazil's Independence Day shared uh, the spotlight with the opening of the Paralympic Games. Uh, the athletes in uh, these events will with uh, eye covering. Yes, they all have to wear blindfolds just to be absolutely certain that uh, there is complete visual impairment and all of the eye patches as well are pre-checked by the officials. All of the athletes are classified as well before each major international competition. And in quite a few cases in the T11, you'll have athletes who have previously been T12, T13, where the eyesight has been better. In a couple of cases where they have competed, take the case of Jason Smith, for example, who's in the 100 meters T13 here, which is least visual impairment. He's on the IAAF circuit as well. Oh dear, Santos ran under 15 minutes in the T13 class in in Beijing and he won a bronze medal silver in Athens but, uh, some of these eye conditions are of course degenerative so they they move through the classes and now complete impairment in the T11 class for these runners and they're just running a little bit behind the uh, schedule but We'll forgive them that on the opening morning in the very first race as everybody gets themselves organized and into the rhythm of competition. But we're pretty close to a start now. In a way, it's almost to be expected. There is a history in the Paralympic Games of having a, a long track race to get things underway in the opening session. But throughout the rest of the week, we'll be getting underway with heats and uh, sprint races all is just about set then for this men's 5000 meters t11 complete visual impairment a lot of the athletes are obviously used to competing against each other at major championships too nuno alves who was front of the pile mention him in a moment here's hassan hussein kassar 28 years old, the reigning European champion from Grisetto, won silver in the 1500 meters as well. His guide, Mohamed Ugur Sakir, silver in the 5000 of the previous Europeans in Swansea. Bottom tier of the far side, the back straight is just about full. Here's Wilson Bay of Kenya with his guide, Bernard Kerr, who previously competed at London 2012 but didn't finish in the 5000 meters. Former Paralympic Games champion. 
from Beijing in 2008 in the 1500 and the 5000 is a journalist in Chen Yang, Shang Zhen, whose guide is Sheng Min Yang. For Ecuador, flag bearer for the Pan Am Games last year in Toronto, where he won bronze in the five, that's Darwin Castro. And this guy, Sebastian Romero. Big cheer for this man, not expected of Odair Santos. He's got two guides here, Carlos Santos being the first. Reigning 1500 meters champion, having uh, failed to finish in the 5000 meters final of the big heat. Three golds in Lyon in 2013. Samuel Kamani, the reigning Paralympic 1500 meters champion from London, and his guide, James Boyett. Alongside the reigning Asian Games champion, Chin Yawada of Japan, and his guide, Takashi Nakata. Reigning Asian Games champion in 8, 15, and 5000 meters. Major championship. Debut for the Kenyan, Eric Kiptu Sang. His guide is Bernard Kipkuri Terer. Coach Albert Correa, who's an IAAF international athlete. Here is the reigning European champion, uh, Christian Valenzuela. I do not see, by the way, the reigning Paralympic Games champion. We don't see him. He's supposed to be there between the Kenyan and the Portuguese. The Portuguese being Nuno Alves, who didn't finish in the world final. Well, Valenzuela not at the start line. Well, that is a turner. We're not sure what's happened with Valenzuela. So it's nine to get us underway in a quick head count. Nine athletes. It's Alves of Portugal. It's Sang of Kenya. One of Japan. Kamani of Kenya. Santos of Brazil. Castro of Ecuador. Shang of China. Wilson Bai of Kenya. And Hassan Kassar of Turkey and remember in terms of the call room the rules are a lot stricter these days uh, it happened in Doha quite a number of athletes top athletes didn't make to the start line they weren't in the call room in time and they were disqualified we can only speculate what's happened with Valenzuela but the reigning Paralympic champion will not be champion here in Rio Wilson by took it out uh, pretty promptly and the first uh, couple of hundred meters but uh, now it's settling back uh, towards the field and Three towards the back, already a bit of a break from the front uh, five to the next four. And Bai happy to take up the running with his guide, uh, Bernard Correa. It's Bai and Sang, 1-2 at the moment for Kenya, quite tight. In fact, all the Kenyans have decided to go out together at the moment. And the guides, actors, if you like, course commentators, tell them where everybody is sang kimani and by the leading three for kenya at the moment expect to move up to bruno alves very pacey athlete the fastest time in terms of lifetime best belongs to odier santos who's perched nicely in fourth place at the moment he's going to get a huge amount of support in the back straight lots of bodies in this closing straight with the guides perched in, but they'll generally each run to their own pace. You'll see that there was a chance of a breakaway for the top four, but it's six ahead of the rest at the moment. Also up there is Kassar of Turkey, the European champion from Grosseto in Italy back in June, which was wonderfully well supported. That and the World Championships in Lyon have provided us the best crowds, definitely at major championships since London 2012. So at the moment, a leading six, three from Kenya, the Portuguese moving up, the Brazilian there as well, and one from Turkey also. So the Kenyans have it between them at the moment. And uh, perhaps uh, just deciding that uh, a bit of a team race between the three of them that they can uh, take team tactics into it. I often see this with the Kenyan runners. You get two or three into a final. And uh, they act as the team within the race. But the field just starting to stretch out a little now, and uh, you think that the back uh, two or three aren't a great medal shot at the moment. But uh, Zhang right there for China behind uh, the Kenyan runners. The Kenyans with that easy, familiar style. Jang sitting in fourth and perhaps looks a little laboured, but he's a little taller and a good long stride when he stretches out. 
Well, there won't be going a very full belt very early on. There's still 10 laps to go in this men's 5,000 metres final, but they will all be going to a particular preordained plan. Kenya, one, two, three. Zhang in the black there for China. Odeo Santos for Brazil, getting tremendous support for the home crowd. And now, a little bit of a move coming from Odeo Santos on the outside. But you can see, obviously, with the guides, how congested it is getting there because we've got 12 athletes in such a small space. And obviously, a lot of the time, the leading athlete in the inside lane, his guide will be in lane two, so you'll have to go out to lane three, largely to try and overtake. And you can see at the moment our lead athlete, Sang, is actually himself his way out in lane two by just on his inside. And then the other Kenyan athlete, Kamani, just tucked in behind. But Zhang is happy with where he is at the moment. Santos, two for Brazil in fifth place. A little bit of a move up from the European champion, Hassan Hossein Kassar of Turkey as well in sixth place. He did very, very well in Grisetto. It was an interesting style he had. And in the World Championships in Doha last year, he'd led for quite a bit in the 1500 meters final, took bronze in the end, bronze in the 800 meters, didn't finish the 5000. He was one of the leaders in that, but it was so hot and they had to have that race as late on in the day towards 10 p.m. in Qatar. But there were a lot of dropouts in that 5000 meters final. Bit of a gap developing. He's falling back in sixth place around 10 meters behind Santos in fifth. But right now, I think everybody looks to be happy with the pace they have, Steve nine competitors but as you say 18 runners and it can be a bit congested especially when athletes try to make a move but uh, single file at the moment santos certainly hasn't played himself out of the race still in that leading group of five and wada of japan just back off that pack so ground to make up for wada and he's got takashi nakata Sang leads it out for Kenya. Just saw in the back straight before with a little hand signal from one of the Kenyan guides to his uh, fellow competitor behind him. So uh, a bit of communication happens out there. Kenya, one, two, three. The teamwork is working very well. I just noticed, by the way, from our uh, live result system, Jonathan Balados was due to be the guide for Christian Valenzuela. And that's suddenly come up as an NA, so I just wonder if the guide perhaps had got injured ahead of the event. In the 5,000 metres, some athletes are allowed too, but we can only speculate perhaps Valenzuela's guide had a problem in the run-up to it. But there's no problem for Kenya at the moment there, dominating this. They've never had a 1-2-3 in this event. They obviously dominate, along with Ethiopia, in the longer events in the IAAF circuit, or at least did until the likes of Mo Farah came along. But they look very, very comfortable in this at the moment. Heading up with seven laps to go. You know, as they make their way along that uh, well-populated back straight, Will, a big noise goes up for Santos, who's uh, sitting nicely at the moment behind the Kenyans. And uh, if he can ride the wave of support that we felt last night at the opening ceremony and is here in the stadium. Been a major move by Santos. He's moved up into fourth place behind the Kenyan trio, then a bit of a gap back towards Zhang in fifth place and then a large gap back down into sixth place for that European champion Hassan Kassar. So it's looking like a Kenya-Turkey duel for now with less than seven laps to go. Zhang has kept his pace up very well and at the moment the rest have fallen back quite considerably. And also for the uninitiated and maybe your first time watching this in four years, maybe your first time watching this overall, but when they cross the line, the athlete has to cross the line first at the finish ahead of the guide, otherwise it's disqualification. We just Kenya saw then the, the change of the guide there, Will, happening for uh, Santos. So Santos had the other Santos alongside him, and he swapped him out now, which are allowed at distances at 5 and 10. The 10,000 metres, when it is run, would tend to go on beyond uh, half an hour. Shang doesn't seem to have the same smoothness of rhythm as he did earlier, but certainly the top four do. So Kenya, one, two, three, as it's been almost uh, from the opening lap when Wilson Bai took it out strongly and his teammates settled in behind him somewhere. Kamani and Eric Sang. Kassar, Turkish competitor there, Wada of Japan, just back now in the field. And little chance it would seem of catching 
our front four. And it's turned into a racing four with the three Kenyans and uh, Adair Santos of Brazil. Eight and a half minutes of competition behind them already. So tightly bunched the leading three for Kenya with Santos well perched in fourth place. And he knows that most of the support is for him. But as for the Kenyans, Kimani, Sang, Bai, they've kept pretty much the same pace. And it hasn't even been a situation that they've changed positions. It has been Sang leading. Bai in second, Kimani third for much of this. And you can obviously see a little bit of care as well that they're keeping well out from the curb. We had a few athletes actually trip up on the curb during the Olympic Games. They're making sure that doesn't happen. Right now, a leading trio are all in lane two. And Santos is in lane one. Obviously, there's still five laps to go. There's no reason for him to try and accelerate on the inside now. But he is trying to keep the pace up on the outside. And it looks quite comfortably that it is these four. There's Kassar back in sixth. Wada of Japan is back down in uh, seventh place. And then in eighth, wearing the gold singlet for Ecuador is Darwin Castro. Another little bit of swapping of guides happening, you'll see there. That is for the third placer for Kenya, Samuel Mushai Kamani. James Boyd is one of his guides. But there's been no change in position of that top three, and Santos is obviously happy where he is as well in fourth. It won't surprise if Sang, Kamani, and Bai for Kenya trust try and lock out the Brazilian Santos from the medals. And if they can bring it home, one, two, three, uh, see what tactics evolve over the final few laps. And Santos sitting in a very nice position and maybe just shifting to the outside now, thinks about it and slots back in behind the third of the Kenyans. If you just look at Santos's guide, he's been in full communication with him. There may have been a chance a couple of laps ago for him to sneak on the inside, but definitely there's really good communication, as has to be the case. It's a T11 category, it's complete visual impairment. But he's getting a very good commentary on Air Santos from his guide. Santos with a personal best of 15 minutes, 16.82. Best time in the field, but the Kenyans, one, two, three, and we're not really surprised. Such is the pedigree in this great uh, long distance racing nation. Yeah, they've had to miss a couple of IPC Athletics World Championships in the past, particularly Leon, quite a few of the African nations, strong African nations, couldn't make it because of funding issues. And the interesting thing about Santos's lifetime best, it came this year, he's the fastest in the field, not just overall, but he's the fastest this year with that 15-16. And he's had the grace in the past, the triple world champion from Leon in 2013 for Brazil. Only a silver in the 1500 meters at London 2012 behind Christian Valenzuela. But he's got the rhythm, he's got the pace, and we've got three laps to go. And the main race is set to start shortly, about 70 meters back to Zhang of China in fifth place. Hassan Kassar of Turkey's in sixth. And Wada there of Japan. Santos just for a moment looked like he was losing touch with the front three. The danger for him is that the lead Kenyan runner a couple in front can make a move and there's a block between Santos and the front. But Santos shifts to the outside now, looking to make a move. And he's being forced wider and there's nearly a tangle of feet and a fall. But Santos oh. brushes to the front. What a move by Santos and it was in that back straight where all the Brazilian crowd are. He can feed off the energy. What a brilliant triple overtaking motion. There was a little bit of bumping, but it was largely done clean by Santos and Santos. And now the Kenyans in second, third and fourth have got a little bit of a move to make and what their tactics will be now. Moving back, pushing back a bit is Kamani in fourth place. Now there's a bit of jostling in position. Bit of a push up in third place. Kamani's been forced wide. Kamani moving up, he has moved up brilliantly from fourth into second place. It's Santos who leads with two laps to go for Brazil. Kamani in second place. The other two Kenyans now push back in third and fourth. And that's Sang and Bai. There's going to be a bit of lapping to do as well. But Santos has got more support. 
rousing the crowd on the far side with 700 metres to go. And we've a Brazilian leader in the fast track event, but will there be a Brazilian winner? I have to say, Santos looks very composed, very strong, as he moves around one of the slower runners and keeps his lead in front of the three Kenyans. Well, he took the problem of how to get to the front out of the equation by moving past all three on the back straight on the previous lap. And Santos looks good, but what's he got left? As they come round into the home straight once more, Santos with three Kenyans breathing down his neck. Well, only two really as one has dropped off the pace. We've got 500, less than 500 metres to go now in the first track final of the Paralympics, Rio 2016. Santos's guide looks up at the big screen. He knows where the movement's coming from behind. And it's coming from Kamani. Here's the bell. They go through in 14-14. And it's one from Brazil. And effectively, it's one from Kenya now. The rest have fallen back. Sang is back in third place. It's a good battle, this, for gold. And it'll have Brazilian interest for the Brazilian crowd on the opening day here. And it's Kimani for Kenya. It's Santos leading the way for Brazil. And now the crowd are getting very agitated on the far side and they're on their feet. There's 250 minutes to go. Santos fighting very hard against Kimani. The guys will have a big part to play here as well. Half a lap to go and it's a Brazilian who leads. Kimani trying to make a move on the outside. And he is making a move on the outside. And did Santos move too early? Kamani's done brilliantly here. The Santos have anything left on the track. Kamani goes out in front. They're all out in lane two at the moment. Into the closing straight in the 5,000 metres. Santos is having to go out in lane three. But it's Kamani who's coming through to win this for Kenya, the first goal of the Paralympic Games. And Kamani crosses the line with Santos in second place for Brazil. And it looks like Sang is coming through in third place for Kenya. So Kenya gold and the bronze. Brazil get the silver and what would have been a fairy tale for the host nation in the opening track final of Rio 2016. Well, they get a silver in the end because it's Samuel Kamani who takes the gold for Kenya. What a brilliant race that was in the end. I don't think Odea Santos left anything on the track. He gave it absolutely everything, but was overrun by Samuel Kamani in the last couple of hundred metres. Really started to uh, overtake in a, a less than ideal situation around the bend, was covering quite a lot of ground to do it, but he had enough left. And uh, Samuel Kamani takes gold for Kenya, but a silver medal for the host nation, Brazil. It was a very, very fast time as well. Castro is finishing as well. He's down and around eighth place. Kamani has taken half a minute off his lifetime best. And it's only five seconds off the world record set in Athens 12 years ago by Henry Wanyoki. He's actually also beaten the lifetime best set by Odier Santos earlier this year. Santos was just outside that. It was a brilliant performance in the end. Wilson by coming through in a lifetime best as well in third place, but it's Samuel Kamani with his guy, James Boyd, takes the gold medal for Kenya. And it looked as if Santos had made the break at the right time. So across the line comes uh, Nuna Alves of Portugal, uh, Ricardo Abreu, his guide, and the pace is a little bit hot today for the 41 year old but a great tactical race from the Kenyans and a terrific effort from Odaia Santos to split them and it really looked like a 1-2-3 was on the cards excellent race and that even without the reigning Paralympic Games champion Christian Valenzuela Big overtaking motion coming with 150 to go. Samuel Kamani timed it absolutely right. He was guided very well by James Boyd. Overtook Odeo Santos. They will be absolutely infused within the crowd. The fact that they managed to get a medal on the opening morning in the opening race. Sang, by the way, who I thought to come in third place. He's dropped off the results page at the moment. He may be put back in. I thought he came in third place. Bai's been given third for now. But Kamani, absolutely no doubt, 
about the success and 15 minutes 16 for him is absolutely exceptional. Santos just behind. It wouldn't have been a dream for him to get gold in the opening race, but it's Kamani's dream in the end. And the three Kenyans, Kamani, Bae and Sang, are enjoying their own personal lap of honour. Kamani, 1500 gold medalist in London, silver, the 1500 in Beijing. And if he's in form here, as he certainly appears to be, having picked up a, a gold medal already, then he may have a very profitable games indeed. But for Santos, it was a very hot pace. 15, 16, 11 for Kamani, just shading, as you said, will the, the personal best time of Santos. So it took a great time to keep uh, the Brazilian out of top place on the podium. We're just waiting for the results to be calibrated because at the moment, Eric Sang is not on the results. And he definitely finished well ahead of the likes of Kassar and Zhang. Zhang fell back to fifth in the end, actually. Wada was in sixth place, having done so well for Japan for a lot of the competition. Zhang in that black Chinese singlet found himself falling back, but Kenya, well, very, very impressive. And they're all getting involved in the celebration here. Three of the top four setting personal bests. Zhang has got an Asian record, a regional record, 15.53. New Asian record for the Chinese, but for these three Kenyans, a lot to celebrate. Unfortunately, the flag's not quite big enough for Zhang, but he's still fully involved anyway. It's a very exciting start to the competition. Well, what, what a great race we... It wasn't uh, a runaway winner. We had uh, a great contest through the closing laps and the glorious uncertainty of sport. You just don't know who's going to win and that really adds to the theatre. And it's going to be a, a theatre of dreams and for some, some disappointments. But uh, what a cracking start to the competition with the uh, men's 5,000 T11. It's very, very...